welcome the Golden Speakers Toastmasters Club of Fairfield, Iowa. And now our president, Mr. Fish, the Good evening, everyone, and welcome again. The mission of every Toastmaster Club is to provide a mutually supportive and a positive learning environment in which every individual member has an opportunity to develop oral communication and leadership skills which in turn foster self-confidence and personal growth. Yay! That's what you want, you're all in the right place. <laughs> And we have some guests here. It's time for you to introduce yourself and say what brought you here. You please. Well, my name is Sue Gale, and what brought me here is um, it's Art's birthday. And ah, I wanted to be sure that I enjoyed what he enjoys. Yay! We have one more guest here. And my name is Claudia Fisher, and I'm here because Terry Hardish invited me to hear her talk. Yeah. Hey. And one more guest. Thank you. My name is John Weiss, and I come from Muscatine, and rural Muscatine, and I'm a friend of Barry Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Well, it's time to bring our Toastmaster up here to introduce the role players of today and the theme of today. And our Toastmaster, we. Stacy Moore. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, viewers at home. I will now introduce all the role players for tonight. The um, general evaluator will be Jesus Rios. Uh, the um, Timer will be Vera Rhodes. Vera, would you explain the timer's role? As your timer tonight, I will keep in time. And table topics are one to two minute speeches. The green light goes on at one minute. The yellow light turns on at one minute, 30 seconds. The red light turns on at two minutes and remains on until the end of the speech. Prepared speeches are usually five to seven minutes. The icebreaker is four to six minutes. Some advanced level speeches are longer. The green light is turned on at five minutes. The yellow light turned on at six minutes. The red light turned on at seven minutes and stays on to the end of the speech. For longer speeches, ask, let me know. <laughs> the evaluations are three minutes. The green light is turned on at two minutes and the yellow light turned on at three minutes 30 seconds the red light turns on at three minutes and remains on till the end of the speech all speeches and evaluators have a 30 second grace period and and the light is turned after the red light is turned on table topic speakers need to speak at least one minute to qualify for votes there you have it Yay! Next we'll have the odd counter, Diane Denlong, explain her role. All right. Good evening everyone. I'm the odd counter. My role is to listen for filler words, unnecessary words we use between sentences and sometimes in the middle of a sentence. So I'll be listening for uhs, ahs, ums, likes, you know, so, buts, ends, tongue flicks, all kinds of things, even <laughs> false starts. So I'll, I'll make a report at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Our um, greeter was Jeff Shipley. Our joke master will be Art Atkinson, and we'll hear from him at the end of the meeting. Our grammarian is Jeff Shipley, and he will explain the grammarian's role. My primary role as a grammarian, my primary contribution to the meeting as a grammarian is the word of the day. And I've missed the last few weeks, so I apologize if this is similar to anything we've had before. 
Intention, noun, plan of action, design, will, or intent, aim, or purpose. I will record who uses that word of the day. I'll record correct usage, incorrect usage. Also, I'm responsible for noting all awkward or misuse of words, so-called grammar mistakes. My favorite part, which I'm really looking forward to, is to give a report at the end of the meeting uh, listing all of the creative language usage that all the fine speakers use. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's get right to the table topics. These are impromptu speeches. And our table topic master is Darlene Martin. Yay! Thank you. Mr. Toast, Ms. Toastmaster. And uh, welcome viewers and guests. This is the portion of our program where you get to think on your feet where I will ask you, you have an opportunity to choose from a question from one to five, and I will read it off. You will then speak impromptu. Okay, who's the first victim? <laughs> yes! Yeah. They're also welcome to uh, participate. Who's say Thank you, pick a number, one, through five. Three. Three. You have just won five million dollars. <laughs> what dreams and desires will you fulfill with this money? Mm. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, viewers at home, honored guests. What will I do with five million dollars? The possibilities are unlimited. <laughs> For starters, I will do some personal things, me, my family, which won't really take that much because my goals aren't really materials. But my goals and my wishes are to be able to help other people less fortunate, fortunate than I, I am. One of the things that I will do, yes, Recently, I've been developing a love, a passion for gardening, which i never done that before in my life. Now I'm so excited. I got some garlic planted, I got some tomatoes, I got some cilantro, and a bunch of other things, too many to mention. And I think, why my mom never taught me about gardening? We grew up in a little village. Land is plentiful. And it's so simple and so easy to plant one seed in the ground, take care of the seed around it, eliminate all the weeds, and with time the seed will multiply by hundreds, if no more. And I think that that is a blessing from the ground, that we can survive out of the fruits. And I think that with $5 million, I will create programs where I can take this limited knowledge that I got so far, which I'm willing to expand, and I'm, I want to learn more so I can share this passion that I just recently developed. I will take this program to the neighborhoods, poor neighborhoods, where in many cases they have empty lots, then they just grow wild, and many times they're used to commit some kind of crime. I will do gardening in that empty lot. I will take this to the poor people, then they have land, but they just don't have the means possibly to buy the seeds or the tools necessary to start doing some gardening. And I think then that's how I will make use of five million dollars. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, who would like to be next? Art. Yo! Okay, one, two, four, two. or five. Two. Okay. <laughs> That's what he likes. Name a person, living or deceased, who you would like to have a conversation with, and what would you talk about? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master, 
Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. There's a gentleman named Werner Erhardt, who is alive, to the best of my knowledge, and who became, maybe the word is notorious, in the late 70s, early 80s, perhaps earlier than that. I'm not good on the history of this for developing something called EST, or I heard seminars training, which had a major impact on many people that I knew and became the talk of the West Coast where I lived at the time. Some years later, I took trainings from a daughter organization called Landmark Education, and that led me to the topic that I really want to speak to tonight. What the conversation I'd have with Werner would be about where did you get this stuff? <laughs> because this stuff has transformed the lives of I don't know how many people and continues to transform mine. But there's been an additional learning that I've had here at Toastmasters that what I want to share with you. And this is actually particularly directed to our viewers at home or are watching who don't actually get to experience the magic that happens in here. We have an intention in this club to create a mutually supportive and positive learning environment, as Satish just recited to us, where everyone gets the opportunity to experiment with and develop skill in verbal communication and leadership. I have learned, when I came to Toastmasters, I came intending to learn how to be a more persuasive speaker. Guess what I discovered? The same thing I discovered in the landmark education, it had to do with my listening. And what I have learned to, to do at Toastmasters, and which is a key part of this safe environment that we create, is I've do, learned to do what I'm calling listening from yes. The contrast is listening from no. Listening from What's wrong with what this person is saying? What could I be saying that would be better? Where are they going wrong? That's the listening of a critic. That's the listening of someone who's not up here with butterflies getting information. I have learned to listen from yes, which is listening from generosity, which is not the listening that I learned at Landmark, which is listening from nothing. Listening from nothing is an incredibly nourishing gift to the person who's speaking. But listening from yes is what we do, which is, in addition, something, where can I listen from contribution? How can I contribute my listening and my analytic skills to helping this person who's a club member do even better? And that, my friends and guests, is what you want to experience by coming here. Thank you. No! Okay, who would like to... I'm sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> for no. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Okay, we have one, four, or five. Number one. Number one. Name a place you dream of visiting and tell us what you would do there. Mm -hmm. Good evening, friends, fellow Toastmasters, viewers at home, and very special thanks to the Table Topics Master for giving me an opportunity of speaking about my dream destination. My dream destination for quite some time has been Hawaii. And why Hawaii is very simple. I feel a land as mystical and as beautiful as Hawaii is supposed to be very romantic. <laughs> and since I'm about to get married, really this time, <laughs> June 30, and my wife shared the same idea, I could not have imagined a beautiful place to celebrate my honeymoon with my wife at any other place than Hawaii. So 
something about Hawaii which appealed to me, other than the fact that it's a very beautiful destination, which appeals for its beauty of its tropical islands, the warm climate, the warm sunny beaches, is the natural beauty of the people who live there. I met a, the very first person in the U.S. whom I met is Samantha Kelly. She was my advisor at the MUM and she is from Hawaii. And one thing that I learned from her is that people from Hawaii, the Hawaiian people, are very warm, very welcoming. So another reason which appealed to me in visiting Hawaii, besides the beauty of the place, is the beauty of the people. And I don't think there is anything more than these two which would want me to visit any other place than Hawaii. Thank you. Okay, we have time for one more. Diane. I'll go. Let's Yo. Be the okay. Uh, we have four or five. 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 Okay. If you knew you only had thirty days to live, how would you spend your time? <laughs> Toastmasters, guests at home, the Grammarian, come on Raul, everyone, pack your bags, we are going to Hawaii! <laughs> 30 days in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Sue and Art, you know, sneaking off to a beach somewhere. <laughs> Vera. <laughs> And I'd have to tell Lewis to come because he never comes to Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> when you talked about Hawaii, I'll just spin off a little here. The reason I'd say let's all go to Hawaii and spend my last 30 days is my oldest son, who's now 28, moved to Hawaii six, eight years ago. It was very important for me to get Ash home to Iowa so that he could see everyone at once. Guess what I have not done yet, and guess what I only have 30 days to do, <laughs> is get my mother butt down to Hawaii, where my son has lived in paradise in Kauai. I am amazed at how fast time goes. The months tick, and I, in my mind I'm planning, I'll go in the spring. As spring comes, mom moves out, just the things that happen in life. Ash, my son from Hawaii, is coming home for the month of May. Guess how long it's been since I've seen Ash? Three years. Three years has gone by, and a bit more. So, to wrap it up with the topic, 30 days, Ash is coming home, but guess what? Pack your bags, we're still going to Hawaii. And that's what I'll be doing my last 30 days if you want to join me. Yay! Okay, thank you, Diane. And now we'll turn the meeting back over to our uh, Toastmaster. You have to vote. Yeah, you do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now you have the opportunity to vote for the best table topic. And has everyone uh, qualified here? No. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Now we will um, bring up our table topics evaluator, John Armstrong. Yo! Thank you, fellow Toastmasters honored guests, viewers at home, and thank you especially for the wonderful table topics. Topics. <laughs> I'll start off from the top with Jesus. Jesus, I particularly liked 
the way you spoke this evening because of how much fun you seem to be having. You greeted the audience and you were smiling immediately and you repeated the question and then got right into it. And you seemed to, like I said, really be enjoying yourself and you used the space well and it felt very comfortable to me. I also like the message about family and how you may not need all that money but to use it to help others gardening and connecting a personal passion of yours into the, the topic, <clears throat> creating programs, using the money toward gardens, etc. Overall, I thought it was an excellent, excellent table topic speech. Um, the only suggestion that I jotted down here was possibly tying the conclusion back into the question again. Um, honestly, at this point, I've forgotten why I wrote that down. <laughs> But that's what I wrote, so that's <laughs> great. Art. Where is Art? Art has stepped up, but I'll speak to... Oh, Art. No <clears throat> listening. Again, uh, <laughs> very nice greeting. Seemed very confident. And for what for me would be a difficult question, you seemed decisive about who you would like to meet or speak to. I very much enjoyed your speech, and especially how you tied in Toastmaster to self. Mm -hmm. And you talked about how persuasive speaking is is listening and I found your speech very persuasive in itself especially as you address the viewers at home encouraging them to come here and encouraging us to listen from yes the one thing that I would have loved to hear more about is what EST is because you connected Toastmasters to that granted there's not much time but being able to connect those two things I would have loved to hear more about that Raul, great intro also and <clears throat> I love, I love how you described Hawaii and, and you were also very clear about that that was where you wanted to go. I also, in the grammarian may have noted this too, you used at some point three, and I can't remember what they were, but it was like the beautiful and romantic and something else, three different adjectives to describe Hawaii, which I thought really uh, flowed nicely for you. I also liked how you connect to the natural beauty of the location to the beauty and kindness of the people. That also though, even though you did draw that connection, that would be, if there was any suggestion, that would be the one suggestion I might have was to kind of make a point of that about the natural beauty of the place as connected to the people themselves. And Diane, lastly, <laughs> I loved how in speaking this speech and actually saying what you said from the get-go, you were acting as if it was the reality. Let's get to it. <laughs> we only have 30 days. Let's get going. I'll get right into my speech. I love the humor of that and the humor of talking about Lewis or other members here. The one thing that I, I also felt your conclusion was very strong. However, the one suggestion I might have would be to tie the conclusion back again to the initial question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we're on to the prepared speeches. Our first speaker will be Terry, and here to introduce Terry is Cindy Trainer. <laughs> Last moment, I found the storytelling manual. Oh, good! So glad. <laughs> the light bulb went off. Is this a folk tale? Yeah, you can call it a fortune. <laughs> is, is, or is it, let's get personal. Or the moral of the story, the touching story, or bringing history to life? Any of the above. <laughs> <laughs> let's personal. get personal. Let's get personal. Okay. <laughs> Page eight. All right. Oh, that's the folk tale. Let's get personal. All right, let's get personal. Project number two in the storytelling manual. Your objectives are to learn the elements of a good story, to create and tell an original story based on personal experience. <clears throat> How long is your talk, Terry? Five to seven. That's all time. Five to seven. Okay, that's great. <laughs> Terry is a guest and a former founding member of Golden Speakers. She hails from Nova Scotia and is visit, visiting the Fairfield. Let's 
see her do her. What's it called? Terry. Terry the fairy. <laughs> Terry, Terry the fairy godmother. <laughs> now that's not the name of her talk. And the talk is successful, sustainable. Spinsterhood! Yeah! I'm <laughs> chair. <laughs> All right, we can grab one of these, Judy. You want to be out one of these? I think I need to wriggle for them. Let's throw them. Oh, there you are. Oh, thank you. Hello, Toastmaster, Cindy, my evaluator, guest, birthday boy, I mean fellow Toastmasters, I know it's your birthday, mm -hmm. and um, my friend who came to support me, and my new best friend. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be back at Golden Speaker, Speakers. I went to the library and looked up, or through Wikipedia, found out what a spinster really is. <laughs> and when I mentioned this around campus, everyone said, what is a spinster? Is that a bachelor lady? <laughs> and when I met Bill Dyer outside the library today, he said, I've heard that word bantered about, but cheapers, I'm not even sure I know what it is. <laughs> so I did get the Wikipedia definition, but I won't bore you with it. It's also referred to as the old maid. <laughs> and if you're a popcorn lover, the little poppers that didn't pop at the bottom of the bag or the bottom of the bowl are also referred to as the old maids. Ah! Mm -hmm. I am the maker of 13 gourmet different types of gourmet popcorn. Mm -hmm. I have been kicked out of the co-ed theater probably more times than anybody else in the history of Fairfield, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> because when I lived here from 89 to 94, the, the kid that worked at the counter would say, I know you're in there, Terry, I can smell you. <laughs> and we would hide the popcorn. I wanted to share with you the family legacy of being a spinster. It's quite a responsibility, and I want to share that Canada's top female folklorist, Dr. Helen Creighton, was my great aunt. She lived to be at the ripe old age of 90, I went to the great stream of printing Wikipedia. They had more information on her than I've ever known to be published. She is a celebrated folklorist, the first lady of folklore in Canada, and has six honorary degrees from all across North America. She collected 17,000 folk songs, ballads, shanties, you name it, she did it. She was four foot nine. She had the largest feet known to mankind or womankind, and I probably have the tiniest. Mm -hmm. And upon her death, my mother inherited all her clothes. Now, there are two items in the back of my van, along with those two pesky manuals from Toastmasters that I just couldn't seem to place my finger on. Stepping up to the plate when you arrive on the IAA course the first day is not a wise idea, as I found out and then being bitten this afternoon by a bug in my room and spending the afternoon in bed flat on my back with a booming headache was not my idea of heaven on earth. <laughs> Aunt Helen had um, very little time for family. She was so busy collecting and spinning and writing that she rarely ever made time for you, but she did call me to her condo. It was St. Patrick's Day, and I arrived at four because in British terms, right, tea is always at four, and she was very prim and proper because her brother, Thomas, was the Queen's doctor, the Queen of England's doctor. So everything was sort of geared for British uh, tea time. And she said, I have a very serious agenda, and I don't want you to talk because this is my tea party, and until we discuss these three vital, vital items you are not to open your lips. And that's very hard for Terry. <laughs> I can only say um, I have to learn to control, and as a children's storyteller, zip the lip. I arrived promptly, presented the bouquet. I was told not to dilly-dally, to take my position in the window, and to sit 
And I thought, oh, glory be, what have I done at 89? Why is she calling me to this meeting? She said, three things. Number one. <laughs> and I thought, oh, glory. And I just returned from Fairfield. I've been here for how many years? She said, um, when you moved back from those cornfields of Iowa, <laughs> she said, I began to wonder about you, and I was very, very concerned. Becoming the president of the Halifax Women's Network is a major responsibility. She said, but I envisioned you burning your bra in the middle of Parade Square ah. and bringing disdain to the great name. She said, but you've been quite successful. They even voted you in twice. That's amazing. <laughs> My question is, why do you always show up the same parties that I show up at? <laughs> and I, then I slipped and I said, that's because I'm your guardian angel. I'm there to make sure you behave yourself. Mm -hmm. ah, number two, she said, growing old alone is very, very lonely. I want you to go out and find a partner. She said, I know you've been engaged three times and didn't show up at the church once, and I did give you a ring once at your sister's wedding. She said, but please don't grow old alone. It's so, so sad. And then again I slipped and I said, but Uncle Mac, your brother just got married at age 90. I could make match, you know, match make for you. There's hope here, but you're only 89. <laughs> she said, the agenda, Terry. <laughs> Number three. And I thought, oh, glory, what could it be now? She said, that TM stuff you've been doing all these years, it seems to agree with you. <laughs> I would suggest that you keep on trucking in that direction. She said, now oh, let's have tea. <laughs> I share with you in closing, women who behave rarely make history. <laughs> <laughs> Our next speaker will be Tom Trainer. And here to introduce Tom is Mangal Tamon. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and dear at home, tonight Tom is giving a speech from Advanced Manual, speaking to inform and project number one. The objectives are select new and useful information for presentation to the audience, organize the information for easy understand ability and retention, present the information in a way that will help motivate audience to learn. When I see the motivate, so I'm excited to listen to him. I'm trying to motivate myself and also help to motivate other people. Which Tom? Tom Trainer is 16 year member of Toastmasters. He is a double distinguished Toastmaster and is currently working on his third. Just give a hand. He has served his club in every officer role, every officer role, as well as an area and division e governor. Tom has started and mentored two new Toastmaster club, both currently operating at the Fort Madison prison. Tonight, Tom is doing project number one, the speech to inform from the advanced communication manual. And his time is 10 to 14 minutes. This is an interactive presentation and you are expected to participate. <laughs> the title of the topic is Role of Toastmaster. The Role of Toastmaster. So, Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored and distinguished guests, including you, <laughs> Terry, from Nova Scotia. The intention, using the word of the day, 
of this speech is to review the role of the Toastmaster. The role of what do we do when we're the Toastmaster. What constantly amazes me is people who have been in the meeting for a while get assigned the role and they go, what do I do? <laughs> like, were you really watching? Or were you just here listening, as Art would say? Listening is good, but watching is good. So I'm going to go over some things. <clears throat> One thing that seems to have slipped badly is what time the meeting starts. Now, Art knows the right question, right? So I'm going to ask him the question so he'll give me the right answer. What time does this meeting really start? No. 740. 7.40. And we've slipped over the years with that. 7.40 means be in the room. Ready to do your role. Ready to do whatever. Because the meeting rolls out at 7.45. That means if the evaluator needs to talk to the speaker, there's some time. If we have some shortages, like we did tonight, and Jeff stepped in, we had an opportunity to fill the roles. Vera stepped in. Mongol stepped in. Just think about that. And as the Toastmaster, you arrive at, give me a number. Who think, what number do you think, Art? 7.15. 7.15 to 7.30. For the reasons I just stated, things happen. People get to work late. People forget. I've never forgotten a meeting, I don't think ever. But maybe that's because I know I just know where the automatic pilot takes me on Tuesday nights. We get here about seven or seven fifteen. The reason you want to be here early for the Toastmaster is to make sure the meeting's set up, that people are set up, that you know what your roles are, if you've got a problem. There was an email tonight at six thirty that our timer wasn't coming. Of course the last thing you do as a Toastmaster is check your email about seven o'clock to find out who's really not coming. So the intention is to share some information. Where does this information come from? It comes from your basic competent communicator manual in the back. Most of this information is there. There is another manual called Specialty Speeches where one of the assignments is to be the Toastmaster. It's got some nice information. So when you get to be an advanced Toastmaster, you can order that manual. It's a fun manual. And you get credit for doing something you're going to do anyway. That's the great, but there's some great details in there. So we're going to talk about Toastmaster's job before the meeting. Be a little bit early. Be prepared. At least have sent an email to your speakers to see that they're on board, that, the, that there's any problems, if there's something they want to do. You're kind of in charge of the whole meeting, really. Stacy puts it together, but the Toastmaster is in charge of this chunk of time. You're also the host. You're not the star. <laughs> You're the host. Now, Diane's laughed because we've had a few Toastmasters who wanted to be the star and upstaged everyone, including everyone in the meeting. And it doesn't work. If you've ever stayed up past, well, I'm here in the Midwest, stay up past 10.35. On the East Coast, it's 11.35. You get to watch, oh yeah, she's at Nova Scotia time, Atlantic Coast, 12.35 to see David Letterman, Jay Leno. They're experts at being a host. They kind of grease all the wheels. It's like being around them is kind of like being on Teflon. They kind of make everything smooth, simple, and easy. If you want to emulate somebody, emulate that. So a couple of things. Be on time, work on time, be prepared. How do you do that? You stick with the agenda. You use it to stay on time. That means if something happens and something falls out of bed and you have a speaker who runs way over, you start to learn to say, well, where can we cut? What can we do? How can we massage this back into shape? So you're really the chief executive officer. You really are in charge. This is your show. Run it. Your other main players are Table Topics Master, General Evaluator. But you're the big boss. <laughs> Just don't let it get so big that your head 
It's so big it fills the whole room. <laughs> what else can we do here? Let's talk about having introductions. Too. We do this differently, our evaluators, but you might want to encourage your evaluators to have an introduction that the person doing the speech ties their introduction to the theme, which is purpose. So we're up here to have purpose. The purpose is to teach. Introductions are concise, short, meaningful to everyone. That's all before the meeting. I'm going to talk about what happens during the meeting, and I have to look at my notes because I don't remember it all. Presides with sincerity, energy, decisiveness. You want to be CEO? What do you have to be, Art? De decisions. decisions. No matter what you're doing, you have to make decisions. 740 rolls around. You don't have a timer, you don't have a grammarian. And you don't have an outcome. You're the postmaster. So teach, what do you do? Find people to fill in the gaps. Right. Because your job is to be prepared. Now, you can, as the toastmaster, if someone shows up <coughs> at seven fifty, you and to do a roll, what do you do inform them? Sorry, you have been replaced. You've been replaced. Guess how many times people show up late when you tell them that? Not once, because they know you're serious. I think we're all here serious. We're here to have a lot. Of, we're seriously having fun. That's what we're here for. We're, we're seriously interested in learning and having fun and laughing. Right, Terry? Right. That's always been our motto here. If we can't have fun, we're not going to do it. That's my motto anyway. I have fun doing that. Something very important, and Cindy and I learned this at the... 10th anniversary of Golden Speaker's anniversary. We're at the dinner at the country club. All Fairfield leaders are there. All the Toastmasters from the state are there. And they bring up the man who helped charter this club originally. They honored him. He talked for a few minutes. He was sitting in the far corner. You know how big that dining room is? It's a big room. Halfway to his chair, the applause stopped. And he kept walking a little bit slower and a little lower. Pretty soon you couldn't see him because he was sliding in. What we do here, the Toastmaster leads the applause from the beginning to the end. And if you're the only person applauding and everyone else is acting, I'm going to say about it. You just keep on doing it. Because pretty soon everyone else will do it. They follow your lead. Other item. This is the control tower of your company, your chief executive officer, your airplane, your ship, whatever. You stand here until you pass off to the evaluator, to the speaker, the general evaluator, the table topics master. This is your area. You leave it? I don't know. Plane might crash. Ship might run into the rocks. I don't know. So stay here and you protect it. And then you hand it off graciously, decisively, and with lots of energy. It's just something simple to do. Let me give you a few more things to think about. One thing that I noticed a lot, this applies to both the Toastmaster, GE, and Table Topics Master. You will sit in the front row. If you're in the back row or in one of those nice big easy chairs, and the person finished goes, Mr. Toastmaster or Madam General Evaluator. You got about a 15 second delay to do the handoff. You want this to look professional. You want this to look smooth. You want it to look really slick. You sit in the front row. If you're in one of those three major roles, you sit here. So the handoff is quick, it's easy, it's slick. It looks good. You know what, if it looks good, people think it's good. So even if it's not good, it looks good. So you want it to look good. So do that. Just be up here. When you're doing these roles, you're in front, you're taking care of it. Graciously acknowledge every person. Graciously. Even if you don't like the person. You can be gracious. You can be gracious, right? We can all be gracious. Gracious is yes. As I would say, graciousness is to say yes. And you say it with your heart. You say it whatever you're doing up here. 
can you acknowledge the people who come up? The evaluators, speakers, you just kind of, again, you're wrapping your personality around everyone and bringing everyone in so that they're all part of your meeting. This is your meeting. You're in charge. I want you to kind of pay attention to those things. Lastly, <laughs> you do the awards and you turn the meeting back to the president. Because your president is the chief officer who opens and closes. Now, a couple of our ex-presidents used to think that, well, I'm the Toastmaster, so I'll just wrap the whole meeting up. And it's like, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. That's not your job anymore. Oh, no, it's not, that, that's it works good for me, you know. No, it doesn't work good. Chain of command. And besides that, you don't know what the president has to say. He might have something important to say. Well, all in all, the role, be the host, not the star. Make it run smooth. Make it look slick as Teflon. And you'll love the job. There's nothing more fun than being a big ham, being up in front of here, and just making it your meeting. Just have fun with it. Enjoy it all. Madam President. minutes to evaluate Tom. Now we will have the evaluation section of our meeting, and here's the general evaluator, Jesus Cruz. The council of the part where we evaluate the speakers, and our first evaluator here tonight is Cindy Trainer. Please help me welcome Cindy. Fellow Toastmasters, honored and esteemed, distinguished guests, mm -hmm. especially our guest speaker tonight, Terry. The storytelling talk, sustainable, successful, sustainable sis spinsterhood. <laughs> well, I'm trying to say sisterhood, too. <laughs> <laughs> How did your audience react to your story? While well, looking around, I saw people nodding their heads. There were some chuckles at your humor and laughter, and lots of smiles. So you obviously really touched on a good theme for your audience. And you use humor to bring them into your lap as we were seated here, and they were seated around you. Could be almost in a childlike fashion. But you didn't speak, you know, as if we were children. The props you used, I really liked your quote card that you held up at the end, and you read it to us, you displayed it to us, and it was, I could read it easily, it was large enough, of course, I'm in the middle row. Could anyone, could people in the back read, read your quote card? So it was very easily seen by your audience, which was very good and a very fitting pose. I liked the way you built the climax into your story. Your aunt's there, she's very stern. She says, three things. Three things. Number one. And you went into that. And we could see her character, I could see her character, I could see you kind of like sitting very formal and stiff in your seat. And you built it up. Number two! You said, and it was like, oh gosh, if that's number one and number two, what's number three going to be? <laughs> number three! You know. So your reaction built up as you showed trepidation. But I would really have liked to see a little more nerve nervousness on your part acted out. A little shifting nervously in your seat, a little fidgeting maybe. Yeah, that would work, you know, like, oh gosh, what is she going to do now, you know. Something to kind of act into it. And each each number that's listed, you know, the reaction is a little bit stronger than the, the previous one. Your character was well-developed, and what we learned about them was your aunt, 
her, you know, her age, and she collected folk songs, and you listed a lot of things about her. And then we learned about more about her personality as you acted out her. I liked your colorful dialogue as you described the story. Zip the lip. That's good body language there. And you imitated, again, you imitated your voice, your aunt in voice and language. And your word choices were very descriptive. To me, they painted a lot of mental images. Like, the, like I kind of assumed you were in a parlor and with overstuffed chairs, and there was a tea service with some nice sweets and goodies somewhere on the side that you're going to get to later after we cover these three things. Mm -hmm. What would the speaker have done to help audience to better visualize a story? Because you use your voice a lot to describe, to show us who is speaking, but maybe a simple prop, like when your aunt was talking, you may want to put on glasses. And when you were speaking, maybe take them off. I don't know if that's too busy, but that would be like a visual clue and to help us follow who's speaking and who isn't speaking. That's all I have to say. I enjoyed your talk very much. I hope you can give another one before you leave. Yay! Now, please tell me welcome our next moderator, Tamar Magan. Hello. Thank you, John Dog Evaluator, and especially Tom. I have a three minute, I'm going to fight. The purpose of this talk was to present informative speech and to present in an interesting manner with clear organization and also support the fact points that makes it motivate. So Tom tonight, he did very well. Thank you. I'm going to through the manual, what made the speech interesting. When I heard he open, I'm going to talk about the role, role review of postmasters. Yes, we all need it. I need it. Because each time I come, I'm learning it. And each time he says, he gives a new idea, even I forget. And it refreshes. And interesting thing is the 16 year that he has been involved. And with his, he has opened other clubs, mentors. That's already interesting. And object is made interesting, which is a motivated audience. How effectively did the speech opening capture and hold your attention? Very well. Review roles, close master. And he asked question to art. Audience involvement. How comfortable and familiar did the speaker appear to be with his or her material? He knew all answers. What I can say is expert. How confident and in control did the speaker appear to be? No doubt, very confident. What was the organizational structure of the speech? Introduction was review role. We started what time we start to start the club here? Question answer, very effective. And a close master like a CEO, he gave, a, he gave a analogy. He controls the meeting, fill the back of rows. If you forget, we can cut, so we can make a next time. We won't make a mistake next time. And he also asked to acknowledge 
if we want graciously, right? If we want here. How effective it did the speaker relay new information? Information is very old, but it's always needed. No matter how far we go in the scientific or the innovation technology, we need it. What could the speaker have done to make the more effectively? Indeed, with the less have fun, could be a stronger. Come to meeting regularly, come, make a mistake, like that, make a mistake, support each other, and be a leader. Or maybe a pause, or slow, or repeat twice. Come, have a fun. Now can I have a report from the ad counter? Hmm. Yes. The ad counter is I am dead bound, please. My intention was to hear every filler word. This is what I heard. Stacy, three ums, Vera, clean slate, Jeff, one aha, one and, and one click of the tongue, which I once did, so I, I spotted you. We got the click tongue. Ah! <laughs> it's sort of like finishing up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, I, I, someone told me I did it, and it was, I said, what? So, I guess I'm aware of it now. Darlene, you had one end up. Jesus, you said now once, where I didn't think it felt like a filler word, but it was a real end night, I want to say. And Jeff, I'd like to say that you did the least amount of ends tonight, so congratulations. Yay! Cindy, you want to work on the ends. Terry, work on your ends. You were at the higher end, so congratulations for that. <laughs> Art had a few ends. Okay, so now, Diane, yeah. John, you had an um and two buts, and you have some ends going. And I wanted to acknowledge Mangal tonight from when I first met him three years ago to tonight. Mangal had one and a, a so and an end. Now, those of you who have been in, when it was Mangal in the beginning, you would be looking at our watches for the ah counter to be finished. <laughs> So congratulations, Mongol. Now start to hear the report from Jeff Chippy, our primarian. So, the first purpose of the grammarian is to record the use of the word of the day, intention. Got a little bit better towards the end, but I was pretty disappointed at first. <laughs> Art used it once, Tom used it twice, Vera and Diane, you used it once there in the last few moments. But Jesus and Diane, I mean, your questions were essentially, what would you intend to do with $5 million, or what would you... I know. So, you could have used it 50 times within those two times. <laughs> you <did> zero. <laughs> The creative language, I really liked arts, listening from nothing or listening from yes. Terry, you're wonderfully creative, with successful, sustainable spinster dumb. You spoke of the first lady of folk folklore and bringing disdain to the Creighton name. <laughs> that TM stuff seems to agree with you. And then Tom, you were very creative. You spoke of like Teflon, smooth, simple, and easy. Handed off graciously, enthusiastically, with full of energy and spoke of wrapping your personality around the room. Okay. Really, that's verb uses. So that's my report. Thank you. Yay! Yay. I have to say that it was my intention to use the word. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. have an animal-related theme. I've been given support material. <laughs> she had a deep, throaty laugh, like the sound a dog makes when it's about to throw up. 
an actual metaphor in a high school essay. <laughs> and another one that charmed me. The ballerina rose gracefully on point and extended one slender leg behind her like a dog at a fire hydrant. <laughs> or this one. What do you get when you cross a pigeon with a parrot? A bird that apologizes for the mess that it makes. Hey, <laughs> 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 mom, my duty to evaluate the evaluators. I start with Cindy. I like the way you introduce Terry in a playful way. In a relaxed way, which I guess this is one of the points of the meetings, to have fun, not really to be so serious. I like to quote what Tom said earlier. We're serious about having fun. <laughs> if it's not fun, we're not gonna do it. So I like the way you were like a little bit playful in Total Terry. I think that was really relaxed for, relaxing for everybody. You mentioned the shackles and the nodding of the heads and agreement of and acceptance of Terry speak. You have a lot of notes. And you did a really good graceful evaluation of Terry. And it's really hard for me to find something to point out with the experience that you have. So, I just have to admit that I didn't find any flaws. Mm -hmm. I didn't find any flaws. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! <laughs> now, Mandela, for the time that I've been coming to the meetings, I have to agree with Diane, you have really made a good progress. You feel really comfortable. You are really confident at getting up here and speaking in front of the group. You did a good job evaluating Tom. You have you went by the manual and that's a sure way to do a good evaluation. That way you won't miss any points. You took the time to go through the whole questions and the manual asked you to answer. And I think you did a good job. The only thing and all is that and, and I'm in the same boat. English is my second language, and I have trouble. And this comes, I will think that it comes because you're too confident. And you say your things with courage. You say the things with, with a lot of emphasis. And I think that's what I lose you a little bit. I, I was missing some of the words because you were just speaking too fast. My only suggestion to you, not all is just slow down a little bit, maybe cut your phrases a little more so I can be more understandable for the rest of the group and that will be my suggestion, but you are doing great. John, right when you came in, you came in with a nice smile, nice pleasant smile. It's just, it's just nice to see somebody so pleasantly and, and confident you came behind the lectern and you took charge. You mentioned all the good, positive things that all the speakers have on uh, table topics. You give them suggestions to every one of them in a graceful and encouraging manner. Again, I have said another scene of love. It was just nice to see you up here with your pleasant smile and doing this encouraging and positive comments to all the speakers. It's a table Thank you, this is. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Down low, please.
The best speaker. Toastmasters meetings, I do see you have fun, I do see that people want to grow and learn, and I always smile and enjoy myself and uh, really appreciate everything that you're doing. Yay! It's always a very pleasant experience. It's really great to see the improvement and everything. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Uh, speaker and guest and a founding member. Oh, shucks. <laughs> it was just a hoot. <laughs> I'm so glad I was able to, to be part and parcel of another successful meeting. Yay! Cheryl Fusco Johnson and Susan Andrietta all celebrate today. Wow. Susan turned 70 and is still one of my bestest friends. Wow. And I have a birthday, Susan Andrietta. Wow. Oh. I have a birthday picture of you guys all together. And at one of our big speech contests, Ed Freeze and Cheryl, and uh, it was a, a huge thing out at the Ag Grounds, and I made this cake for their birthday. If you could have seen the look on Ed Freeze's face when I walked in with this cake, you would. I think Ed Freeze turned 65 today. Yeah. And he was another one of those early ones. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It was interesting and enjoyable. I'm glad I came. Thank you for being here. Any member would like to share anything? This you. Saturday, Division E contest to, to uh, hop in North Liberty to support Seth mm -hmm. and Upender from our club. Starts at 2. It's at the Liberty, North Liberty Recreation Center. Where's Liberty? North Liberty is just north of Iowa City, a couple okay. miles. If you want to get an email, if you haven't, it's in there. It was in the District Toastmaster email that came out last week. You might be able to re-forward that yeah, section. Yeah, I can forward you that information. Cindy and I will be there. We would like to support Seth, who is representing our advanced club, and Upinder is representing our club. Yeah. So, or I'll put them on a golden speaker Facebook the address. Maybe easier also. Yeah. Okay. Tonight. So, I'll be there to support our fellow members. Yes. And since we have done. Do you all want to sing for us? Yeah. 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 Happy to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear heart. Happy birthday to you. And cosmic hippie birthday, <laughs> and it says inside, 
the entire universal consciousness chipped in to buy you some good vibes. We just don't know how to wrap them up. Okay, see you all next week, meeting adjourned.